Over the years, I've driven quite a lot of ultra expensive luxury cars and a great number of high powered performance cars, but it's rare to find those two things combined in one vehicle, and it's rarer still to find them combined in a full size SUV. Say hello to the Range Rover SV Autobiography. It's a $200,000, 550 horsepower, off-road powerhouse that defies explanation and expectations. How does it look? This is a long wheelbase Range Rover with quite the updo in terms of exterior trim. At more than 17 feet long, it's hardly subtle to start with, and the bright work on the body side tells the world you've splashed out on the fancy version. Overall, I'd call the look more impressive than attractive, but your eyeballs might tell you different. How's the storage? Now the total available cargo space in this long wheelbase Range Rover is pretty monumental at over 80 cubic feet. That's enough space to put both your Labradoodles cage and your pheasant hunting gear. The interior of the autobiography spec vehicle is decadent, right down to the storage. There's a place to chill your bubbly and its corresponding crystal, a cubby for couture sunglasses, and a power covered home for the branded headphones. Is it roomy? Behind the steering wheel, the Range Rover has always felt weirdly tight for someone of my 98th percentile size, but this particular car has space everywhere else. The back seats especially offer not only room for my legs, but a perfectly carpeted platform to rest my patrician feet. How does the interior feel? There's no getting around the fact that it's downright decadent in here. On the downside, that means that many, many cows had to give their lives to upholster this interior. There's leather almost everywhere that there's not wood or metal. Speaking of metal, there is knurling uh, to an extent that I've never seen in another vehicle. It's around the start stop button. It's around the button to open and close the glove box. It's around the train response button. It's even on the gas pedal and the brake pedal. Is it well equipped? You're probably already starting to get the picture, but yes, this SUV is equipped with everything. Massaging seats, rear displays, powered airplane trays, a 1700 watt Meridian audio system, and a great glorious panoramic glass roof top the ludicrous options list. How's the infotainment system? Okay, here's the main area where I'd be a little ornery after spending more than 200 grand on this Range Rover. To call the infotainment system last generation would be charitable at this price point. It's slow, clunky to use, and had occasional trouble doing basic things like playing my iPod through a cord. Can the chauffeur fix that? Is it a good daily driver? Okay, so the thing about the SV Autobiography as a daily driver is that it's just as good as a standard Range Rover, which is to say, really pretty good. The ride is smooth, the automatic transmission just kind of falls out by the wayside so you don't even notice it. Uh, there's plenty of power, of course, there's a lot more power than the standard car, so you don't have to worry about sort of merging and passing and things like that. But the special part about this car in particular is that it's really great to ride in the back and not drive at all. So why don't I pull over, grab my chauffeur, and get the real experience. So the best daily driver experience is actually when I'm not driving at all, but in fact riding back here. There's tons of space. First and foremost, the long wheelbase version of this autobiography has got the luxury of space, right? My knees aren't coming anywhere near hitting the back of the seat. I can recline, I can relax and watch a movie, although I can't watch it particularly well because it's just a DVD on not a great screen. Suffice it to say, it's still a luxurious experience back here. Really, it's everything that you can want um, if you do like being driven around, if you want to give some of your friends a special
special treatment, if you wanted to pick up a client from the airport, uh, there are a lot of different ways to use this, I think, especially in the highest stratum of the sort of society, that makes a lot of sense. Is it fun to drive? Oh! So over 6,000 RPMs, you can definitely hear the engine, which is great. Yeah, uh, this is definitely more fun to drive than your standard Range Rover. The 550 horsepower engine with 502 pound-feet of torque, don't forget, has got all kinds of power. So if you want to screw around with the paddle shifters, downshift, and really feel the thing go, you can. You certainly don't have to, but the car is definitely a good companion, both in a straight line and on a reasonable road. Now, there's a lot of body roll. This is a really big, long SUV, so don't expect it to handle like a Ferrari or a Corvette or even a Miata. It feels its size all of the time when you're throwing it around, but that's kind of okay. How's the fuel economy? Premium Unleaded doesn't stick around for long if you're heavy on the throttle. You'll have to be judicious to hit the EPA number of 16 miles per gallon combined, with 14 in the city and 19 on the highway. Imagine how bad it'd be if Land Rover didn't make this thing all aluminum. How much is it? Oh, didn't you hear me say this like 10 times already? It's 200,000 freaking American dollars with no extra cost options. That's right, a base of $199,495 plus $995 for delivery and a total of $200,490 plus tax. Wow. What are the negatives? Listen, every Range Rover is great to drive, really capable, and impressive to look at. And the SV Autobiography increases all of those things, but for an ungodly amount of money. And it doesn't make it a fundamentally better vehicle most of the time. Who should buy it? Guys that own or run oil companies should have one of these babies in their garage tomorrow. Heirs to personal family fortunes and new money millionaires are also on the list. Pretty much anybody who needs a go anywhere super limousine will be done right by this Uber Range Rover. Thanks for watching, dudes. If you guys have questions on the Range Rover, ask them in comments. You should look to find us on Facebook and on Twitter and MotorOne.com.